This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. And this question comes from Mary. Mary asks whether it is sometimes justified uh, to impose sanctions on a country, even when they hurt average citizens, because it is a way to stop what we might believe to be uh, evil behavior on the part of a government. I would like to broaden Mary's very good question because it is certainly part of today's world and today's news, but I'd like to broaden it a little bit to ask and talk about sanctions. And here we have to understand what happens when a country, and I might as well use the United States because it's the single most frequent applier of sanctions in the world. And number two is so far behind that it's almost free to say the United States and some others, because it's an American a tool. It's used more by the Americans over a longer period of time than any other country and by a lot. And most of the time, the United States justifies sanctions, either by the claim that it is only affecting the leadership, or for example, in the current case with Russia, oligarchs, the very name suggesting something awful and evil. Uh, the whole idea is it's going to affect the bad guys over there. And if by chance it were to affect average people, well, that's not the target. That's not who we're interested in hurting. That's not what the sanctions are about. A lot of kind of semi-denials and then when you discover that, of course, masses of people are negatively affected by the sanctions we apply, then Mary's question comes into effect. Is that maybe justified because we're so angry about, so opposed to what the government is doing? So let me respond as follows. I want you to shift your focus for a moment with me to the country being sanctioned. Uh, Cuba has been sanctioned by the United States for half a century. Iran has been sanctioned by the United States on and off many times. Russia has been sanctioned and so forth. What happens in those countries is crucial when they are sanctioned. But what it's crucial to understand is that when a country is sanctioned, it uses its own internal mechanisms to cope with the sanctions, just like it uses those internal mechanisms for everything else it does. And one of those internal mechanisms in Cuba, in Iran, in Russia, in China, is in almost every case that the people who have the power and the wealth use their power and use their wealth to offload the burdens of the sanction onto people lower in the pecking order of the society. To say it in simple English, people who get sanctioned, the president of a country, the prime minister, or the oligarchs, the big corporate executives, the government officials, whichever, they are in the prime position to put the pain somewhere else, which is what they do in almost every case. Not every case, but almost. And it's general enough that I can talk to you about it. It means that the sanctions always hurt large numbers of people who are the most vulnerable in society, the least able to protect themselves because they don't have a lot of power and they don't have a lot of wealth. If you impose sanctions on a country, you're going to hurt average people who can handle it least well. That may not be your intent, but that is what you're going to do. And I would be dishonest if I suggested to you anything other than that President Biden knows that. And the head of any other country that imposes sanctions on another country knows it. Mr. Putin is not inconvenienced by these sanctions. They don't change his 
life, except in one way that I'm going to get to in a moment. So the sanctions, to be blunt, don't hit the people you are told and we are told they're aimed at. Because those people have the best possible means to escape the impact of those sanctions and to put the pain onto those below them in the society. Which means it's not an effective way to change the behavior of the leaders of a country. And it never has been. Sanctions don't work. I'll go back to Cuba. We've sanctioned them for over half a century. And they remain opposed to American policy and a leader in Latin America for other nations that are becoming opposed to the United States. Sanctions didn't work. Iran is as busy doing what we don't like, the United States officially. The sanctions didn't work and they haven't stopped Russia in Ukraine either, and I could go on. All of the tariffs Mr. Trump imposed on China, did it change the, not at all. The trade war with President Trump told us he could easily win. We don't even basically hear about it. It hasn't changed anything basic in the relationship between the United States and China. So what do sanctions do? Two things. Number one, they're wonderful for the domestic audience in the country doing the sanctioning. Mr. Biden can get up, as Mr. Trump did, and pronounce we are hitting them with this. Early in the Ukraine war, we heard about the mother of all sanctions will bring Russia to its knees. Guess what? Didn't work. But that's not surprising. They, not, they never do. Are they costly? Yeah. Are they inconvenient? Yeah. Are people hurt? Yeah. But those are at the bottom because that's how the societies all work. The vast majority of people who died of COVID were not rich, well-positioned Americans. They were poorer people. They were elderly. They didn't have the money and the power to escape the way other people did. That's what we're talking about. That's the reality. And here's the double irony. They don't just not work because of everything I've told you. There's one more reason. The people in the countries being sanctioned, the leaders that we're supposed to get, they can go to their own people and say, you know the suffering you're going through? Well, it's because of the sanctions. Those foreigners are trying to force us to behave differently by making your life difficult. And you know what it does? It solidifies the people behind the leaders that we're supposed to overthrow or to get rid of or regime change by means of these sanctions. It makes the support for the object of our sanctions stronger domestically. And Mr. Putin's support in Russia right now is enormous and an illustration. Sanctions don't work. If conversations like these strike you as something that ought to be part of the national conversation, please work with us. Share this video with people you know who might be interested. And if you're interested in the work we do in general, this kind of video among them, please go to our website, democracyatwork.info, where you can be added to our mailing list. You'll receive notification of the work we do. We will not inundate you with emails. And of course, if you can help with the financial support we need to do these things, that will be appreciated as well. Thank you.